Hey fish friends, Zenzo with Tozawa Tanks, back with another video. So today's video was prompted by some questions that uh, one of the viewers uh, posted on one of my other videos recently. I hope you guys don't mind this uh, format that I'm kind of playing around with. You might have noticed the last couple of videos that I've done have been a little bit more like a classroom setting with the with a whiteboard. All the videos aren't going to be this boring and sciency classroom style, but I thought I would just uh, change it up a bit every once in a while if there's a topic that I feel like needs a little bit more explanation to add the whiteboard and to have some um, have some information on there. So this video is really about flow rate um, and and uh, your filters and how much uh, gallons per hour you are getting um, through your pumps or your filters as far as uh, turning the water over in your tanks. And this comes up a lot when people are looking at you know the filter for the tank and what's the right size and what's the right um, you know gallons per hour and the flow rate. And sometimes there will be a filter that that will advertise itself as, you know, being large enough for a 75 or large enough for 100 gallons, and it will give you a um, a gallons per hour rating on that pump or on the filter, and really that's under optimal uh, optimal conditions, and uh, it doesn't take into account head loss, which I will talk about in a moment. So, um, the the uh, the viewer had posted a question saying that he has a uh, 55 gallon tank and I believe he's gonna be stocking cichlids in there if I'm not mistaken. And his objective is to turn the tank over about seven to 10 times per hour. And what that means is the water in the tank will flow through that filter or his sump or, or you know whatever device he's using for filtration. It will flow through that seven to 10 times in an hour. So if you have a 55 gallon tank and you wanna flow it through um, if you want it to turn over 10 times, you want you need to move 550 gallons in an hour. So that doesn't mean that you just go out and you buy a, you buy a filter that says that it moves 550 gallons per hour because there are losses in that in that um, transition between the pump outlet and where it ends up back in your tank. So when you are looking at your filter um, that you're going to purchase or what you have on hand already, it's going to have that rating and it's going to say, you know, it moves 563 gallons per hour or 850 gallons per hour, whatever that is. And just remember that that's the optimal output right at the, at the, at the closest part to that pump outlet. And it doesn't take into account the diameter of the tubing that you're using and how long the tube is and how high it has to go and things like that. So we're going to address that in today's uh, conversation. So in this example, I um, just pulled some data for a uh, pretty commonly known um, submersible pump, and that's an Eheim 1250 pump. And that Eheim pump is rated at 1,200 liters per hour, um, 1,200 liters per hour, which equates to 317 US gallons per hour. So um, it's not a large pump, it's kind of a medium pump. That might be something that you might stick in a sump or things like that. Um, so not for a large tank or large application, but still just for this purpose, I wanted to use it as it had uh, a lot of information readily available for me to pull. So in this example, and I'm gonna pretend like this is in a, in a sump, um, the, Eheim 12, uh, the Eheim 1250 is gonna be down below in a sump and it has a four feet, uh, it has to go up four feet in vertical height. So that means that if it's down here on the bottom, it has to go up four feet vertically, right? So it's fighting gravity up in order to get back to the top of the tank and uh, disperse the water back into the tank. And then in addition, in this example, it has to move five feet horizontally. So in this example, maybe there would be like a sump back, you know, behind me in this direction, and it has to go to the top right corner of this tank. So it has to go five feet across. This is a four foot tank, so it would be back in this direction. It has to go five feet across and up four feet. In this example, I'm using a three quarter inch diameter, in, inside diameter tubing. And um, so when you, when you take the 317 gallons per hour and you subject it to the, the uh, three quarter inch diameter tubing, having to go across five feet and up four feet, you have what's called head loss and that's pressure. So when you're looking at flow rate um, and not without getting too scientific or anything, basically in layman's terms, flow rate is the measurement of a liquid um, kind of passing through a unit time. So, you know, how much fluid will pass through, you know, X amount of inches or centimeters or feet 
in a, in what you know in a period of time per second per minute etc and that's and that's basically what flow rate is so in this example with that pump at 317 gallons per hour or 12, 1200 liters per hour with these conditions you have a significant amount of head loss so your total losses would be 4.3 feet of head pressure that's lost or 1.86 psi and the flow rate now becomes 188 gallons per hour now there is a formula that you can do i didn't write the formula down here because this is not a math class there is a formula that you can calculate the flow rate there are formulas online that you can also pull and, and get that to be able to solve your own flow rate but there's also calculators handily available readily available on the internet so you can just plug in the information you know determine you know uh, how vertically, how much vertical distance it has to travel, what's the horizontal distance, what's the diameter of the tubing, and it will tell you what the rate of flow is. And in this, ex in this example, it's 188 gallons per hour. That's a significant decrease from what it was rated at. So on the box, it's going to say 1,200 liters per hour or 317 U.S. gallons. In reality, in this example, you're only getting 188 gallons per hour of flow rate at the exit of that um, of that tubing, which is 59%. So that is that is a loss of 41%, which is pretty significant. So so that's uh, kind of an, ex uh, an explanation of, um, you know, why it's important to understand head loss when you are looking at um, pumps and, and filters and things like that, canister filters if it's far away from the tank and it's got to go a great distance, to understand that you're not going to have that optimal flow. So getting back to this example in the 55 gallons, he needs to move the tank uh, or turn the tank over seven to 10 times in an hour. So let's say in this example that uh, he is using a sump at, at seven times turned over in an hour, that's 385 gallons per hour. We know that if he were using this pump, it's only moving 188 gallons per hour. So that's not gonna work for him. He's gonna need two of these in order to get enough flow to turn it over twice. Um, and if he wants to move it 10 times, that's 550 gallons per hour, which we talked about before. And um, so here I'm, I'm looking at uh, kind of, and I'll give you kind of the, the math here, is I'm taking the 317 gallons per hour, um, dividing that by 188, and that's giving you the percentage. Um, the 1.686 is the math that I used. So 1.686, multiplied times 385, which is the gallons that he needs, equals 649 gallons per hour. So what that means is in order to get 385 gallons per hour, if you have a three quarter inch diameter tubing with a four, feet, four foot vertical uh, movement with five feet of horizontal movement, you need a pump rated at 649 gallons per hour. At 649 gallons per hour, 59% of that is gonna give you your 385 essentially. And this is, there was fractions, so I'm just kind of rounding to the closest whole number. Um, same thing here with the 550 gallons per hour, so at 1.686 multiplied um, by 550 gallons, he needs 927 gallons per hour in, in, um, uh, based, in posted or, or uh, stated uh, gallons per hour, rated uh, gallons per hour on that pump in order to get the 550 that he needs. So um, very important to understand. So in this example, he's gonna basically need 650 gallons per hour pump or 925 um, gallons per hour pump. It's a little bit mathematical and, uh, you know, but it is important to understand if you do have to move water from one area to another and you're counting on that flow rate to um, be at a certain level or a certain number in order to turn your tank over a certain amount of time. There isn't like a golden rule that says you must turn your tank over seven times or 10 times or whatever it may be. There are a lot of factors that it, you know, what's the biological load, um, is your tank planted? There are so many factors that um, play into, um, you know, what's needed as far as filtration. And we've talked about filtration before and you know, water movement and things like that. But this is just some simple math and um, you know it's it's pretty pretty easy to do once you understand uh, what the rating of that of that of that pump is, and then understanding how to get to this number. So again, this 100, 188 gallons per hour and the 59 percent, or the 1.686 for the formula, 
those are gonna change. If this number is three feet, if this number is two feet, this is gonna be higher. It's not gonna be 188, it's gonna be 200 and something, right? So then you're not going to, and then this number is gonna change, so you're not gonna need as strong of a pump to move the same amount of water. So before I go, we're almost at the aquatic experience. That is coming up on November 3rd, 4th, and 5th, I believe. Um, it's gonna be in the suburbs of Chicago, kind of in the north, west part of uh, the, the greater Chicago area, not too far from the airports. Um, it's gonna be a ton of fun. I will be there on, sept on, on Saturday, November 4th, all day. So if you see me, grab me, say hello, get a sticker. I'd love to say hi, get a picture with you. And uh, so if you're anywhere within the greater area, you know, three or four hour drive, totally worth it. It's not expensive to get, you know, to be there. It's a pretty inexpensive admission uh, fee. So uh, hopefully you can make it and I'd love to see you there. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.